Welcome back. You may remember last time we spoke, we talked about embracing both pain and pleasure, both support and challenge in the pursuit of greater level of, of aliveness, of prosperity, of, of anything, of, of anything really. And we talked about the factory worker, the, the CEO and so on. So basically, the greater your vision, right, the greater your cushion, the more that you'll be able to handle both support and challenge. Because along the way to success, not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to agree with you. Okay? If you get half the people liking you, you're doing a great job. So how much comfort or discomfort are you willing to put up with in the pursuit of your purpose? So the greater the vision, the more that you're able to accept in both support and challenge. And you've got to, you've got to really embrace that. And the only time for you to, to really embrace it is as you're going through it. So as you're listening to me now, you're going, yes, that makes sense. But it's when you go through it and you feel it and you live it, that's when I want you to remember these words, right? That your vision has to be greater than what the naysayers are saying about you at the moment. Okay. Let's take this example here. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about financial um, uh, greatness. Because as I said earlier on, next to wanting to be loved and appreciated for who we are, as we are, we all have a degree for financial security, you know, for financial freedom, okay? Because I believe that money is an energy to be used to share and to, to, to grow. Now, the level of wealth that you're going to achieve will be determined by how much emotional volatility around that wealth you're willing to put up with. Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of our time, said, unless you can manage your emotions, don't be expected to manage money. I say, unless we can manage our emotions, don't be expected to manage anything. If you're run by your emotions, then you have, you're run by your lower nature of pain and pleasure, okay? And we'll be running away from pain and for pleasure. But if you have a goal, if you have a purpose far greater than that, you're willing to put up and embrace both pain and pleasure in the pursuit of that. Let's say that um, <clears throat> you're a 10 year old boy Right, this is just a, an analogy. And all you had was $10. So if I gave you $10 as a 10-year-old boy, you feel elated and lots of emotions, right? But if I took $10 away from you, you'd be depressed. Also lots of emotions. So you can't manage $10, right? If, if, if you understand, if you're following the analogy. Let's say as a 20-year-old, and we'll, we'll use, keep using this example, you have $100. That's what you're worth. So as a 20 year old, if I took $100, depressed, if I gave you $100, elated. But as a 20 year old, if I took $10 or gave you $10, you might be peeved, but there's not too much emotional volatility. Now why is that? It's because there's a thing called tithing. Tithing means 10%. Right? Now, the churches, the mosques, the synagogues have known this, and they ask us to tithe. Tithing means one-tenth. See, we can handle a plus or a minus 10% volatility in our income without having too much emotional reaction. So when you look at that, whatever you feel that your net worth is, you can only handle 10%, right? That's your true net worth. That's the level of... Um, um, mastery you've attained. Let's keep going up in this example. As a 30-year-old, let's say it's $1,000. A 40-year-old, uh, we'll say 10,000. 50 is, it's 100,000. And 60 is, it's a million. Okay, so if you're following this. So as I said to you, if you're 40, and your net worth is $10,000, okay? If someone came up to you and gave you $10, or took away $10, you wouldn't be upset. No emotional reaction. So what is the level of mastery you've mastered at 40 year old? Remember I said it's plus or minus 10%. You can handle, 10% of that is $1,000. You can handle $1,000 extra, or that be taken away without you having too much uh, emotional reaction. Now, you're probably thinking, that, follow this example. <clears throat> if you're on a million dollars 
and you lost half a million dollars, okay, that's more than 10%, that's 50%, you'd be emotionally crushed. You'd, you'd be in reaction. Oh my God, I've lost half a, uh, half a million dollars and you'd be devastated. You'd be making wrong decisions to try to catch up. Would you agree? Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. What if I gave you half a million dollars? So you invested half a million dollars and you made half a million dollars. That too, because you become elated, it's an emotion. You will not be making the right decisions, right? If you make half a million dollars, what happens is you get cocky and you think you're better than what you, you, the level that you're at, right? And you start making get rich quick schemes, uh, those sort of things. And you think that you're a, a astute investor. Either one, being putting on, on a pedestal or in a pit, right? Either one of those, it will lead to financial problems. I had a gentleman in my practice many years ago, one of my financial planning practices, and he came in with his wife and I wasn't seeing him, one of my financial advisors was seeing him, I just came in to say hello. And he was really out there and he said, oh, I want to buy seven or eight different investment properties and I want to buy two inside my superannuation fund. And, and I thought, why is he so aggressive? Why does he want to invest so much? Then I asked my advisor, I said, can I have a look at his asset and liabilities? And I had a look at them and I realized he was renting. He and his wife were renting. They had $750,000 in cash in the bank and about half a million dollars in cash in their super. And I thought, hang on, he doesn't even own his own home. And I tried to tell him, look, you're going way above your head. You're letting your emotions dictate the investment choices that you're making. But he was so adamant that he wanted to do this. And his wife was just sitting there, very stoic, not saying much, and he was very animated and so on. And it just hit me here, I go, what are you guilty about? And his wife went like that, and she looked at him. And he was standing there, he goes, a few years ago, I invested in this business. And unfortunately, it went south, and we had to sell it. And the $750,000 there is the proceeds of the remainder of our house. And I said, can you see that you are guilty about the decisions you make? Massive emotions. And because you're guilty, he felt riddled with guilt. He had to try, in his mind, make up for the bad decision that he, he made with his family. And by doing that, he was willing to put himself unconsciously at risk at the sharks of the world, or taking on too much debt, or more than he can handle. I promise you, either depression or elation, either end, you will not be making the right investment decisions. So your true level of wealth, your true level of mastery is 10% of what you have. As I said again, if you feel that your net worth is $100,000, the level of mastery that you have is $10,000. So you can handle plus or minus 10%, which is $10,000, without getting too much emotions, without irrational thinking, which, without trying to catch up, without being uh, elated and thinking that you're better than you are. Therefore, you still make incorrect or unwise decisions. So it's really, really important. So I'll, I'll discuss this in a video a little bit later on about saving 10%. It's, it's wonderful. It's helped me tremendously. Now, let me tell you this, I can say hand on my heart, any time that I've gone beyond the plus or minus 10%, I've sabotaged, right? I've made tens of millions of dollars, and when I get cocky, when I think I'm better than I am, when I think I've reached a level of mastery more than, than what I really, truly have, I've sabotaged and has brought my, my, self, my net worth down to my self-worth, all right? So, I hope this has been of benefit to you. At each level, at each level, there is pain and pleasure, at each level. If I could measure the pain and pleasure out of 10, right? 10 being uh, a, lot of, a lot of pain or a lot of pleasure, zero being nothing. At the 10-year-old level, if I took $10 away from him, if you could measure it, 10 out of 10, pain. Oh my God, my whole life's over, okay? But listen to this, as a 20-year-old, if I took $100 from him, if you measured that to that person, ah, 10 out of 10, he would feel exactly the same intensity, emotional intensity, that the 10-year-old for the $10. He would feel it for the $100. He or she would feel it for the $1,000. Do you follow me? So at a million dollars, 
if I took $100 away from you, you probably wouldn't even register. One out of 10. I hope that makes sense to you. Please let's not fool ourselves you know, into thinking that, that we can handle more than what the universal principles actually say. So increase your wealth by managing your emotions. If you can't manage your emotions, don't be expected to manage money. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you at the top.